<laughs> Today's drama, Stake Out. stand in the shadows of a lonely alley. He said he had Cranston lined up for a kill, Duke. Where is he? Take it easy, Joey. Got him staked out, but we've got to handle it careful. And yeah, where is the rat? Promised my brother Silky I'd take care of Cranston for putting a finger on him. I waited long enough. Now, where is he? He went up that alley just before I called you. He ain't come out yet. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Okay, come on. Be too good a target, Joey. That guy Cranston can handle a rod, but good. Yeah, but he's used to the trigger end. I'm gonna give him a dose of the business end. Hold it. Huh? I think I saw him. Where? Up there near the end of the alley. See him? No, where? Right. I lost him in the shadows. Come on. He can't get out of the alley without passing us. Yeah, must be hiding behind that pile of junk at the end of the alley. Just too bad. Joey, look out. There he is. What? Joey. Joey, can you hear me? Sid. Sookie's going to be awful mad at Cranston for knocking off his kid brother. Yeah. Awful mad. The poor kid loose hasn't got a chance. The referee's raised his hands, Lamont. He has stopped Oh, him. good. That boy's taking enough punishment for one night. The winner, Larry Walker, by a technical knockout. The time, two minutes and four seconds of the third round. Well, I hope the next fight's more evenly matched, Lamont. No, it will be, Margo. In fact, that's the one we've come to see. It could be a classic. Well, look who's here. Hello, Monty. How's my favorite fight manager? Hello, Mr. Cranston. Hello, Miss Lane. Hello, Monty. Ain't been around a long time, seems oh, like. Oh, hasn't been a fight worth coming out to in a long time, Monty. Ain't it the truth? They don't make them like Dempsey McClellan anymore. That's right. Frame five, that's what they are, like I always that's say. That's it. Oh, yes, son, what is it? What phone call? I'll take you. Oh, uh, excuse me, folks. Uh, take good care of Margo, Monty. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, great fellow, that Mr. Cranston. Uh, Miss Lane, uh, he ain't no jam, is he? Jam? What do you mean? Well, it's uh, just when I hear around. I, I mind my own business, but uh, I hear things. What kind of things? Well, I hear he's hot for shooting. For shooting? What? And now the stellar presentation of the evening. In this corner, weighing 187 and one half, wearing black trunks, Mike Taub of Brooklyn. <laughs> Ronnie Lamont should be back by now. This is the fight he wanted so badly to see. Well, maybe he got delayed. You want me to go see? I'll go with you, Monty. And in this corner, weighing 197 pounds, wearing purple trunks, Bobby Marcus, the Bridgeport farmer. Monty, he's not in any of the phone booths. Where could he have gone? Well, maybe the doorman will sing him. Hey, hey, Jerry. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you see Mr. Cranston come back here? Mr. Cranston, yeah, he uh, just asked me to flag him down a hack. Me, he left? That's impossible. He wouldn't go home without telling me. He didn't go home, lady. Gave the hack a joint name the Silver Slipper on Water Street. That ain't home. Silver Slipper, that's a tough dive. Why? Hey, hey, where are you going, Miss Wayne? To the Silver Slipper, Monty. I'm old-fashioned. I like to go home with the man who brought me. Anything, thanks. I'm looking for a man. So is a million dame. So you're looking someplace else, will you? Well, you don't understand. The man I'm looking for came in here. Yeah? What's he look like? Tall, dark, good looking. Oh, him. You mean he's here? Yeah, he's here. 
See that blonde at the corner table? Yes. Ask her. She knows where he is. Thanks. I beg your pardon. What did you do? Oh, I'm looking for Mr. Cranston. The bartender said you'd know where he was. Sorry, sister. You don't want to be disturbed. But look, he's with his lady friend. Now, be a good girl and blow, huh? His lady friend? What? That's impossible. Oh, oh the shot and it came from the back room. That's where Carl and Cranston are. Come on. He shot her. He shot Carl. He's still got the gun. For heaven's sake, Lamont, what is this? Well, explain now, Margot. Don't let him get through that window. Stop him. Never mind him. How about Carla? Carla? Carla, can you hear me? Holy mackerel, she's dead. <laughs> wanted for questioning in the murder of Carla Devon's cabaret entertainer. When last seen, Cranston was wearing... Uh, that's enough of that. Commissioner Weston, you can't believe Lamont is guilty of that girl's murder. I'm sorry, Margo. You saw him there yourself with a gun in his hand. If he was innocent, why did he run away? I don't know. But I do know Lamont. He couldn't be guilty of such a thing. Margo, I warned him time and again. I kept telling him that if he kept getting involved in police affairs, someday he'd get in over his head. Well, today was that someday. What do you intend to do, Commissioner? What can I do, Margo? Believe me, I won't enjoy it. But I intend to find Lamont Cranston and book him for murder. Lamont. Lamont, are you there? Now, let's get away from here. You don't think Weston suspects you're on your way to meet me, do you? No. You sound angry, darling. Surely you don't believe... What can I believe, Lamont? Why did you run away? Why did I have to meet you like this? Because I have to stay free long enough to find who did kill that girl. But darling, how could you believe... I don't know what I believe. Leave me at the arena and go running off without a word. Well, didn't you get my message? Hmm? I sent that usher back with word that I had an emergency call that I'd meet you at your place after the fight. An emergency call? Yes, she said it was a matter of life or death. She begged me to come to the Silver Slipper immediately. She said her name was Carl. I know. The blonde girl said you and Carla were old friends. Well, that's ridiculous. We just started to talk when there was a shot from the window and someone threw a gun into the room. I was starting out the window after the killer when you and the crowd broke in. But darling, why didn't you stay? Well, there was still a chance I could trap the killer before he got down the fire escape. I... I guess I believe you, Lamont. Oh, Lamont, get over. That car's trying to pass you. Hold on, Margaret. They're trying to run us off the road. Watch it, Margaret. Are you all right? Yes. They're getting out of the line. Two of them. Oh, Chris. What is... I don't move. What is it? The guy wants to see you, Cranston, awful bad. Well, who are you? What do you want? You don't know us, Cranston, but you know our boss. His name's Silk. Silky Reeves, remember? That who? What's he doing out of jail? You'll find out, Cranston. When you sent him up, you didn't do as good a job as you did on his kid brother. What? You're going to wish you'd gunned Silky, too. Gun? Wait a minute. I didn't kill Reeves' kid brother. No. Try telling that to Silky when we get there. Keep our guests waiting. Right. Okay, Louie, bring them in. Well, well, Cranston. Haven't seen you since you testified against me six years ago. Six years in the pen can be a long time. So why the young lady? She was with him, Silky. We had to bring it. How unfortunate for her. Duke? Yeah. See that the lady's comfortable and well tied. Wait, sister. Get your hands up. Hey, leave her alone. You... You wait a minute. I've seen you someplace before. Yeah, get around. Come out. Hey, wait. You'll have to pardon this broken down old shack, Cranston. You've been meaning to get rid of it. We're taking care of that tonight. Hey, what's this all about? Surely you must have guessed that I'd resent your killing my kid brother, Joey. I didn't kill your brother. Unfortunately for you, there were witnesses. Duke, tell him. Sure, it's okay. 
Joey followed Cranston into an alley one night. I seen them both go in. There's a shot. Cranston came out alone. Liar! Don't call me a liar, copper. Now I know where I saw you. Well, what'd you do that for, Duke? I want him to know what was happening. He'll know what's happening, all right, Silky. This place will go up like tissue paper. You got the gasoline ready? Right. How about the dame? Take the gag out of her mouth. Maybe Cranston would like to hear her scream. Okay, Silky. What are you going to do? You're viewing your boy for a hot reception, baby. No, you can't. Lamont. Lamont. You wake up, baby. In time. Okay, Louis, set the fire. Right. There she goes. We better get out of here. This will go faster than we thought. Lamont. Lamont, can't you hear me? You've got to hear me. You've got to. No. Cranston and Margot Lane are kidnapped by gangsters. The old frame building where they're being held is set afire as Cranston begins to regain consciousness. Lamont, for heaven's sake. Lamont! Lamont, can you hear me? I hear me. Margot. Lamont, hurry. The whole place is going out in flames. Second, Margot. You think? There was a rope. I can rip the snot open on this nail. I'm tired. How can you walk? I think so. Come on, Lamont. I'll make the doors lost. They just slam. No, wait a minute. Not that way, Margot. She's probably outside waiting. <laughs> Come on out the back. The wall looks fairly well rotted. Hurry, John. Hurry. I'm going to stand back. I'll try to take the plank. <laughs> Now, we can get through. Now, you go ahead, darling. Oh, heaven's got a minute to do it. Keep down low, Margot. Got to keep out of sight. We're sure they've gone. Oh, there they go. I think it's safe for us to get started. Where are we going? I recognize one of those three hoodlums, Margot. The young one named Duke. Oh. He was the one who posed as the usher who brought me the message at the arena. What are you going to do? I'm going to pay a visit and an old friend. Who may know what's behind all this. Mr. Poindexter, our underworld contact. So, this is Mr. Poindexter's latest headquarters. Quite an exclusive little spot. If you don't mind sawdust and cobwebs. Not so loud, darling. This is considered the store club at the waterfront. Oh. There's Mr. Poindexter waiting for us. Oh, good evening, Mr. Poindexter. Ah, uh, Mr. Cranston and the lovely Miss Lane. Uh, be seated. By all means, be seated. Thank you, Mr. Poindexter. <laughs> Oh, I, uh, I hated to impose on you, but this is very important to me personally. By all means, my friend, by all means. I, uh, uh, I took the liberty of ordering a brief libation. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll be my guest, of course? Why, thank you, Mr. Poindexter. Uh, uh, one point, however. It, uh, <laughs> it seems I'm financially embarrassed. Oh, just, just temporarily, of course. Oh, you must allow me. No, 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 no. Most emphatically, no. I will... I, uh, well, perhaps just this time, yes. I, uh, uh you, uh, uh, you, uh, you may bring the order, my untrusting friend. Mm-hmm. And now, now with your service. You read about the girl Carla Devins I'm supposed to have killed? Hey, as in my position, one hears such things, Mr. Cranston. Well, needless to say, I didn't kill her. I was sent to the scene of the murder by a man posing as an arena usher. He's a hoodlum named Duke. Ah, yes. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. You see, uh, uh you see Duke was the late lamented Carla's sweetheart. Oh. Mm-hmm. Although one heard rumors of a rift lately. Rumors? Of what kind? Uh, a new light of love had dazzled the fickle young Duke. Now it's beginning to make sense. Duke wanted to get rid of Carla, so he shot her and tried to plant the blame on me. But why? Possibly in uh, uh, retaliation for your supposed killing of Silky Reeves' young brother. Our underworld is sensitive on such a <laughs> point. Yes. We had some evidence of that tonight. Well, I've bothered you enough with my problem, Mr. Poindexter. Thank you very much. 
Come on, Margo. We've got to run. Oh. Before your libation arrives? You have ours, Mr. Poindexter. All three? <clears throat> very well. But only as an accommodation, you understand. Uh, good evening, my friends. A very good evening to you both. <laughs> Where are we going, Mr. Where is he, the blonde with the silver slipper who told you I was an old friend of Carla's? I want to know why she lied. Apartment 2B, this is it, Margaret. This is where the blonde lives. And I'll knock. Coming, coming. Don't knock the door down. What do you want? I ain't... You. Thought the cop had you in moth balls by now. Mind if we come in? You bet I do. I'm allergic to killing. Sorry, it's have to end the show. No. I have to talk to you. Look, I don't know what you two are up to, but if you don't get out of here, I'll yell copper so loud it'll curl your eardrums. You deliberately frame me, Blondie. Why? I never saw your friend Carla before in my life. Okay, bud. If your story for the little woman is that telephone gag, I can go along with it. Why are you doing this? Look, baby, would it convince you if I showed you a picture of him and Carla all uh, lovey-dovey? Why, yes, I guess so. Okay. You asked for this showdown, Cranston. <laughs> Didn't think I had these pictures, did you? <laughs> ah, here it is. Sucker, what? get your hands out where I can see them. A gun. What are you going to do? Call the police? I'm no stool pigeon. If I turn you over to them, you'll be dead when they scoop you up. Now get out and stay out. All right. Come on, Martha. I wouldn't have believed it. I've never seen you cowed so easily. And by a woman. I hope she thinks the same thing, Margot. Hmm? What do you mean? I mean, now I know I'm on the right track. Blondie couldn't have known about that telephone call unless she was in on the frame-up. You see, Carla had time to tell me she wasn't the one who called. What are you going to do? Shadow is going to have a talk with Blondie. I think she'll talk to the Shadow. Try that number again, will you, operator? I gotta get him. I gotta. <laughs> well, who's that? The shadow, Blondie. The shadow. <laughs> Has your boyfriend run out on you? Well, I, I don't know what you mean. Your boyfriend named Duke? How do you know about that? Duke thought he could get rid of Carla. Blame her murder on Cranston. You were in on the plan, weren't you, Blondie? No, no. Weren't you, Blondie? Well, I called Cranston. Sure, Duke told me what to say, but I swear I, I didn't know Carla was going to die. That's the truth, so help me. I swear it. All I right, didn't... Blondie. Tell me, where's Duke now? I don't know. I, I can't reach him. They had a job on tonight. They should be finished now. After the job, where will they be? Well, I, I don't... Where I... will they be? At the hideout. It's an abandoned ice house near the bridge. The meeting there to split the take. Perhaps the shadow will join that little meeting. And if you've told the truth, no harm will come to you. But if you've lied, Blondie, you'll answer to the shadow. <laughs> time you got here. Silk is plenty thought. You've a gun on that watchman. Better get in there. Here's Silk, Silky. Well, if it isn't Daniel Boone. Now, look, Silky, I didn't mean to kill the old guy. I thought he was going for a rod, so I blasted him. You've been pretty fast for that rod lately, Duke. Okay, so I killed the guy. We made it clean, didn't we? That ain't the point. We're hotter than a 50-cent pistol. And I don't like being hot. Okay, fellas, if you don't like being hot, I can fix that. Hey, put up that rod. You crazy? No, just a comedy. You two complaining about being hot, I just figured to cool you off a little bit. Yeah, you kill us with that heat of yours, and the boys will know it was you. You wouldn't last a day. There's more than one way to cool a guy off in an old ice house like this, Louis. What are you talking about, Duke? A chamber ain't been used in years. The ammonia pipes are still there. That's good enough. You think I'm going to let you... Josie, says, Louis. That's smart, Silky. Now, go on, back up. Slow. 
further, further. That's it. All right, Louie, open the door to the ice chamber. Only do it nice and slow, like, so I can watch your hands. Thanks. Now, boys, after you. Go on inside. So you think you're going to knock me and Louie off? Is that it, Duke? You catch on fast, so key. I'm taking over. Boys, you'll find us, Duke. And when they do... When they do, you won't know it. Hey, you shot a hole in the ammonia pipe. <laughs> so long, boys. Happy dreams of being chased. <laughs> Bye. At the door. Oh, you can't. Can't, I can't punch you. Can't punch it. <laughs> what? You settled a little trap and fell into it, eh, Duke? Who said that? This is the shadow, Duke. Shadow? I followed you in and closed the door behind me. I thought it was more polite that way. <laughs> Get us out of here, shadow. This place is filling up with ammonia. First, I want the truth about the murder of Carla Devon. From you, Duke. A guy named Cranston killed him. The truth, Duke. I tell you, Cranston did it. You lie. <laughs> you killed her, Duke. She threatened to tell the truth about Joey Reeves, and you killed her. All right. All right, I killed her. All right. Let me out of here, will you? But Cranston didn't kill Joey Reeves, either, Duke. <laughs> Who did? <laughs> Let us out of here, will you? You die with it. I think I can hold out a few minutes longer, Duke. <laughs> Who killed Joey Reeves? Was it you, Duke? Was it? All right. All right. I killed him. You... You killed my brother. You... You dirty double cross. All right. I'll get you. No, you don't. There'll be no more killing, Shoki. Now, let's have some air. Cops! Let's get out of here. Now, Louis. Duke has a story to tell Commissioner Weston. You and Silky want to make sure he tells the story right. <laughs> but, Cranston, I've straightened it out for you this time. But next time... There won't be a next time, Commissioner. No, indeed, Commissioner. I've really learned my lesson this time. I've heard that before. I don't understand why Duke went to so much trouble to try to frame you for Carla's murder, Lamar. Well, he had to kill Carla Margot. She threatened to tell the truth about Joey's murder. You see, she was the only one who knew Duke was systematically working his way up in the gang. The first going of the ladder was Joey. That was the easy one. He had a ready-made fall guy in Cranston. Louis, who was number two man in the gang, was slated to go next. And finally, Silky Reeves himself. He was certainly an ingenious takeout. You know, for a while, Commissioner, I almost believed I was guilty myself. So did I. And what's worse, so would a jury. Oh, I'm afraid you have something there, Commissioner. So from now on, leave police, police work to the police. Lamont Cranston, you uncross those fingers. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Ha, 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 